want to say thank you. I have my friend Tom here today. And um, as I told you guys, I had already voted. So I wanted to see if I could get a friend to go through voting by absentee uh, through the mail. And he has graciously agreed to do this. Hi, Tom. <laughs> I see you. Thanks for make, letting me do this. Yes, absolutely. So first time we want to show everybody what came in your envelope. So you should have an instruction sheet. Yep. So um, I just opened it up today. So perfect. Um, inside the envelope, it's nice and thick when you get it. Um, you get the actual ballot itself, which is sealed. Like I, well, it hasn't been opened yet. Um, you get the envelope that you have to stick your finished ballot in, um, which I actually recently learned you don't need to put a stamp on it to get it back to the um, to the registrar. Wait, how did you learn that? Because we're hearing that you do. Oh, so I, you and I should look into this, but I'm pretty, I yes. heard that you need to stamp. Okay, so after this video, we are going to look that up and in the caption, we'll make sure we put the answer. But if you have a stamp, maybe just put it on just in case. <laughs> All right, I'll put the stamp on just in case. Okay. All right, so then you've got um, the statement of the absentee voter. So right. that's in here, and then the instructions. And one more thing, Tom. Didn't you get the sticker? <laughs> I did get a sticker. I don't know where it went. Yeah. <laughs> so you also get the I Voted sticker that you can proudly wear on um, May 19th, which is election day, uh, while you're still at home, because we're still doing that by then. But, um, but yeah, so and the sticker. So the first thing we want to do, Tom, we want to read the instructions. And so you don't have to read it all out, but just make sure that you understand. The first thing you want to remember is don't open your ballot until you're in front of your witness. And Tom has a lovely witness. Yep. She's, she's right off camera, but she's right here with me. My, my very lovely wife. She's yep. supporting the cause. And, and so some of you guys may have heard that the court said you don't have to have a witness, but I want to be very clear. That is for the June 23rd primary election, you still have to have a witness for the May 19th local election for Newport News and Hampton. And so if you live alone, you want to make sure that your ballot envelope stays sealed until you get in front of the witness that you're going to use for the signature. And now you're in front of your witness, so go for it. Let's see what's in that ballot envelope. So as you guys know, Newport News is split into three districts for local level elections. You have North, Central, and South. Hey. And so your ballots will look a little bit different because based on where you live, you have different candidates. Yep, and so um, I'm in the Central District. So I have, I vote for City Council Central District seat A, and then I also will vote for uh, the Central District School Board member. And if you could do your ballot in a secret ballot fashion, we'll, <laughs> I'll fill in some time while you do that. Uh, you want to make sure that along with every election that you look up all of the candidates and find who meshes best with your beliefs and in the direction that you want to see the city where you live, go in. Um, and so for Newport News, you have two, that is um, city council and school board. And in Hampton, you will have three, and that is mayor, city council and school board. And in Hampton, you do not have districts. So it will say choose one for mayor. And then I think it's three for city council and four for school board. Don't count, um, don't quote me on that, but it says on the ballot, but you will be filling in multiple people, but in Newport News, you guys only do one per option. And so you have done that. And yep. then now what's the next step? Yep. So now just put it back in the envelope and seal it back up. And so this envelope, is that ballot, is that um, envelope B? It's envelope B. Awesome. And so can you show that to us one more time? Sure. So that's where you're going to fill out some information. This is basically how you are using your identification, so to speak. And so that's what uh, I guess the original purpose of having a witness is. So when you go to vote, you usually show your ID and then that's how you vote in person. So this is in lieu of that. And so Tom's going to fill that yep. out. And so he asked me my full name. So I write out my full name. No nicknames, full name. Right. <laughs> um, then I'll put my address on here. That comes next. Yep. And don't forget, if you had your address, um, if you had, like, say, for instance, you're a college student that's registered to vote in, you may go to CNU and you're registered to vote in Newport News, but you may be doing the shelter at home away with your parents. Well, you want to put the address that you're registered with. And so that's the address that you should put on um, the envelope B. 
Yep. And then so the, they ask me for my signature. And yep. then it asks me for the signature of my witness. So I'm going to ask hand in that offer that. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, she's a trooper. That's yeah, that's always great to have a have a good partner. <laughs> Well, this is going to remind her to go request her ballot and vote. Yes, yes, we should all remind our people to request their ballots. And Tom, are there any statements on there that say like penalties or things if you were to do this in a nefarious way? At the very top, it does say I do hereby state subject to felony penalties for making false statements um, pursuant to the code. And then that's, um, that's what it says. It's I swear or affirm under felony penalty that this is all true. Yep. And so we know that this narrative of a ton of voter fraud is just not actually what's happening, but there is a statement that says, hey, you're committing a felony if you're doing this um, against the, the rules. So that's what that signature says, that you're doing it right. And then that envelope that has the registrar's address on it is where you'll put envelope B. Yup. And again, we'll find out whether or not you need a stamp and we'll put that in the um, in the caption. But I do want to give a shout out to Delegate Paul Kresak, who had a bill that um, that the return ad uh, the return envelope for absentee ballots would come prepaid and it would actually say it on it. Uh, and that got passed, but with a reenactment clause, which means we have to pass it again in 2021 and then it would become law unless we change some things in special session. <laughs> and so now you can seal it and yep. mail I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna get a stamp on the, unless we find otherwise. Um, and then I'm gonna- so how hard was that? I'm how gonna, hard was it? How, oh, this is easy. <laughs> right, I vote, yes, Every time I vote, I usually always vote um, absentee. So this is- Oh, really? Yeah. Um, yeah, there are a ton of folks. This is my sticker. Hi, your sticker. <laughs> I'm not gonna there wear it till election day though. There are a ton of folks that um, I know that are in their like 60s and they've never voted absentee. They have always made arrangements to go. They might have gone to college in their local area. So they're, you know, like, wait, what is this? And it's, so it's a really cool uh, opportunity. So thank you so much for helping them learn how to do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll say I usually have a work obligation, which is why I always have to um, vote absentee. But I'm excited now that, you know, with, with no fault absentee voting, this is functionally, you know, vote by mail. I mean, this is you know, if you ever think that you're not going to be able to make it on election day, there's really no excuse not to vote. I mean, this is the yeah. easiest way to do it. Yeah. And you can also do absentee in person up through Saturday before the election. And so what's really, really important is that now Tom has done his duty. He can't leave it on the kitchen table. He actually has to return it. And you have to return your ballot by 7 p.m. on election day, May 19th. And if you haven't requested your absentee ballot yet, you have to do that by 4.59 p.m. on May 12th. So Every single one of these votes will be counted. Every single yeah. one. Every single one. Tom, do you have any closing remarks that you want to offer to the people? <laughs> no, this is important. Every election is, is important. Every election is the most important election. Um, just get out and vote. Yep, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being a trooper through this and being a important resource for us to help people know how to do absentee voting by mail. Thanks, Sia. All right. Thanks, Tom. Take care.